Lemur Music is indeed lucky to have this professional quality orchestra bass in our stock. This instrument, a large instrument, was made in the early 1800s in Germany or in the Bohemian area, but somewhere in that eastern part of Germany bordering on the Czech Republic. It's made with wonderful materials. It's in wonderful condition. And this bass has been played uh, professionally in the Orange County Symphony for many of the past 20 or so years. So let's take a tour and give you an idea of uh, how great this bass is. Starting up at the top, These tuning machines are, uh, in my, to my eye, clearly uh, 19th century with this uh, one-piece construction here where the worm gear, the same piece of iron is forged out into, uh, to make the keys, which are then overlaid with a piece of brass. The crown gear here is, uh, I think, especially large, and there is a mother-of-pearl dot in the middle of each one. I have never seen that before. Beautiful, uh, I'm going to turn the bass sideways here so you can see this ornate turned finial that's put on the ends here. And then I would comment that, uh, as I said before, it's a big bass, but this scroll is, uh, is gracefully proportioned, just beautiful. Never a break or a repair done here at this interface between the neck and the scroll. Original neck piece. And I say that with confidence because um, many of the older bases, maybe most of the older bases, were made with a reduced space here. This overstand dimension was quite a bit lower. And if you look closely, you can see that this instrument has a maple wedge put in underneath the fingerboard. We see this quite commonly. Here's what I don't see. This work was done, you know, um, even more professionally, more carefully, where the back of the neck was apparently cut in, shaved in, so that the feel, the shape of the neck has just the right consistency. It does not become excessively thick down here because of the wedge. Beautifully done. Um, Sometimes big bases are cut down. This one is not. You can see the original purfling line all the way around. Fine grained, I would guess, oh, at least 20, 25 lines per inch on this spruce. And um, you can see evidence of repairs for sure on the top, but you don't see any major misshape or... Um, uh, repairs that would affect the value or tone of the instrument. Very smooth across underneath here, which is where I look for uh, bass bar problems. And then as I turn the bass around, you have just got to get a load of this wood that was selected for the back. This is one of the most fantastic pieces of flame maple I've ever seen. Striking flames that go all the way out to the edges, even from top to bottom and side to side. It's really a rare piece of wood in any century, uh, but certainly this one has uh, taken on an additional character. You see the patina of wear, and as I rub my hand across here, I can feel the texture of the flame. Just beautiful. The rib pieces are also very nice. And you can see evidence of cracks and repairs through the years here, but not extensive. And then the width of this rib remains constant up to the top. And I would say if there's any advantage to this, it is to increase the volume of air inside the body. And this is a base, because of its width and its depth, has a sound that projects to the back of the hall. It's my intro to invitation.
I will be playing a bit of the trio from Beethoven's Fifth to show a little bit of what this bass can do in the low register. Now I would like to play a bit of Barasini's Elegy to show some of the upper register soloistic register. <laughs> 